Hey, so I'm going to speak about the one platform that Jake did not mention in his talk, but was walking around that and trying to trigger us a lot of time into thinking about he might mention it. So I'm going to speak about Flutter, yet another cross-platform system. You probably already heard of it once, but for the rest of this, um, if you have never heard of it, it's totally fine too. And if you already have opinions, that's fine too. So I am Miriam Busch. I'm CTO at Karl Marx Berlin. We're an agency doing mobile app development here in Berlin. And so we do a lot of apps for clients. So what is my take when it comes to cross-platform? So I mean, most of the time we're doing native Android apps and native iOS apps. Um, but that did not feel right a lot of times. So kind of all the time that I'm doing on this job for six years, I was always looking out for a cross-platform solution that does not suck. Because a lot of us, I think, have made very negative experiences with what I call the first generation of cross-platform solutions. So Cordoba and uh, PhoneGap, those people who have tried those and experienced um, the old way of having uh, use, just using a web view and putting everything to a web view and trying to have this running on a mobile phone was not the experience we are used from native apps back in last years. And as you've seen um, during the keynote and also with other cross-platform systems, a lot of evolution has happened in the recent years and I think now we're at a position to re-evaluate cross-platform solutions, even if we thought they were a bad choice in the past. So this is what I'm going to do with you. Let's look at those two options. Let's look at would we use for a new app, would we use Android, or would we give Flutter a try? So the way we are doing is, is a quiz. So um, when I was young in my youth, there had been those magazines on paper still. And one thing that I liked in the youth magazines, well, I both, it was a love-hate relationship, were those quizzes about the psychological quizzes. So they were asking you all kinds of mostly sometimes stupid, sometimes a little bit interesting questions. And there was a rating that was somehow arbitrary or totally obvious and telling you afterwards whether you should move out of your parents' house or leave your boyfriend or whatever. Um, so I'm going to do a quiz like this with you about should you do Flutter. So what I want you to do now is think of an app. Think of an app that you want to write. Or it could also be an app that you are already working on or something you had been writing at some point of your life in the past. So think of an app now that you're going to use for the rest of the exercise. If you got one, get out a piece of paper either or a calculator, just get out your phone and open up the calculator or a note sheet because you're going to take, you need to uh, mark your points like we did in old days when we were reading magazines. So, uh, and how the rest of the presentation is going, I will present you questions and a rating, and you think about your app and you pick your rating for your app. And if you have no idea how to answer the question, don't worry, because after the question, I'll jump into some details and explain how this relates to Flutter. And afterwards, I will show you the question again, so you have another moment where you can make up your mind what is your answer for this question. Okay, are we set? So, let's start with a simple and maybe obvious one. Do you actually care about shipping to that other platform? So now it was on the keynote, so I'm allowed to say iOS. So, uh, do you actually care? It could be you totally care because you would definitely do that. It could be, well, it's your hobby project and shipping to a second platform is nice but optional. Or it could be, nope, I'm Android only. So you see my arbitrary rating. If you ship to another platform anyways, I give you 40 points. If it's nice but optional, I give you even more points because this means without a cross-platform system, you would not do it. So this is why I give you even more points if it's optional for you. 
and, and also in case it doesn't work, it's not so bad because it's optional. And nope, well, that's zero points, neither for Flutter or against Flutter, because, yeah, you can totally do also Flutter to only ship to Android. So, in case we care about another platform, so why do we care um, about having a new approach to this? So I've noticed a lot of times when you are actually building for two platforms in parallel, you are trying to build the same thing twice, which has several issues. So for one hand, I mean, in the end, it's not exactly the same what you're building, which sometimes may be a problem, or sometimes not, but sometimes it is not intentional, but it just happens to be this way. That just happens to be the outcomes that one, one team painted blue and the other one picked the other color. And so there's a lot of talking about this, because do we actually want the one app to be blue and the other to be pink, or must we change this? Must we hold back Android? with the launch until iOS has kept up. So all of these discussions take a lot of energy when you are actually developing separately for two platforms. And the other thing, I mean, as an engineer, I just hate redundancy. So having two separate code bases doing a lot of the same things is just redundancy, and this is something that we actually learned that we want to avoid as engineers because it's just better to not copy stuff and not have it in parallel, but just have it once. So this is why I kept looking for a cross-platform system that does not suck, or that sucks less at least, because there's always, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So now there's Flutter. What is Flutter? So Flutter, if you write a Flutter app, you're writing your app in Dart. Forget first, forget everything you know about your systems. You are going to write your app in Dart. Then for Android, there is one Flutter activity, and this Flutter activity starts off your whole Dart system, and this is where your app will live from now on. Of course, there are exceptions, but we will come to those later. For now, think you are going to write your entire app in Dart with a few exceptions. Um, yeah, so when you're shipping this app, it is compiled to native machine code. So the term native is a bit difficult when we are talking about cross-platform, so let's be clear here. When the Dart app is shipped for release, it's compiled to native machine code. And it is bundled with the Flutter system. So you have your whole app bundle shipped to, uh, compiled for and shipped to either iOS or Android. So, you should have an answer for your question number one by now and take a note of your points. For those coming late, either use a calculator uh, or a piece of paper to note the points that you're getting when answering these questions. So, second question I'm going to ask you, what is your design approach for your app? It could be that you're doing a material app anyways, because that's what you like. It could be something that is um, becoming more and more popular, especially with bigger clients. People want to have their brand-specific designs, so they say, I don't want an iOS app, I don't want an Android app, it shall be my app and my style. So also custom UI is becoming pop popular again. So that would be 30 points for you. Or it could be native per platform. In case you are thinking about both platforms, it mo would mean material for Android and just looks like every Apple iOS app on iOS. So what does it mean for Flutter? So first we need to understand how does Flutter run UI code? Um, like I said, we are shipping all of the app, we're shipping all of Flutter with the app, and everything is written in Dart. And also, the platform components, so the typical UI of Android and iOS is not used by your app. Instead, Flutter is doing its own rendering. It comes with its own rendering engine that is uh, rendering uh, your UI on top of the graphics engine Skia. So Flutter is doing their own rendering, and all of your app's widgets are shipped with your app. 
So the one good thing here is that uh, Flutter rendering is fast. We ha we've heard it before. Um, the code is compiled to native machine code. There is no bridge here in the middle. So uh, this is actually running at 60 frames per second. And since you are shipping everything with your app, you now have a lot of flexibility. So if you want to go brand specific design, if you want to go custom design, because you only write your UI code once, it is a lot easier to do custom UI opposed to if you were doing it twice for two separate platforms and for two separate UI systems. So if you do brand specific UI, this is pretty, well, it is very helpful here. If you want to do material all the way along, you're pretty fine too because um, the Google material team works closely with the Flutter team and you do have, I think even you have the best uh, on material I.O., um, the Flutter implementation might even be better than the Android implementation in terms of completeness for the new standard. So this is also pretty fine. What I don't like so much is the approach if you want to do a native looking iOS app. But so this is opinionated. This is my opinion. I think for iOS, it's a step back if you are actually shipping a rewrite of Apple's widget done by some team within Google. This, there's just a potential for messing things up in the future when iOS updates or also even Apple not liking this at some point of time. Because again, here we have a rewrite from another team. So the, someone at Flutter, at the Flutter team rewrites everything iOS is doing in their operating system and you are going to ship it with your app. So when you look at this, this is why I gave more points for brand specific design. Um, Material is good too, and I don't like native per platform. That would not be my choice, but thinking of the risks, I mean, also all the time you are fine to adjust your scores all the time if you see some, if you see more risk somewhere or more benefit on another place. Question two is done. We are stepping over to question three. So um, feature completeness. Because those widgets are rendering on their own graphics engine, you cannot simply reuse something from the system that you know that uses UI. So um, if you want to use a partial screen of something, you need actual Flutter support for that. So if your app needs support for partial screen Google Maps or partial screen web views, it's just a minus 100 for now because this is just not there yet. But before you finally make your call, there is a fallback in case your app wants to do some web views or some Google Maps. So what you could do is fall back to a full screen Android activity. So uh, as I said in the beginning, the Flutter activity starts up your Dart code, but you can also just start up a regular full screen Android activity and switch between the two of those. So that's, I think that's happening with uh, early Flutter apps like Hamilton that were using the camera. So they are switching, for some features, they are switching back to the native platform and then uh, the focus gets back when the picture is taken to your Flutter app part in Dart. There is one, so this makes everything possible, but also there is a price to this. So assume uh, in your Android part, yeah, you would also need to access business logic or models, then I think this would be kind of a killer for me for, the, for this approach, because there is a high risk when you do something like this mixing, you may end up um, having to support three platforms instead of two. So there was a lot of talk about this uh, with um, Airbnb just dropping React Native because of this statement, because they said before we were supporting two platforms, iOS and Android, and now we have to support three platforms, and this is actually too much. And I think this is something you also need to consider when you're coming up with an architecture for a cross-platform solution. Like, what is the impact on your team, and is it actually going to be a third full platform, and can you handle that? And I think once you're starting to um, move code also 
like to, to build part of your app in Dart and part of your app on the native system, this is something you have to consider when you, whether you can support that and want to support that as a team. But don't worry, that does not rule out all of platform features. That's only about uh, UI facing features. I mean, one more thing you could think about is that yeah, it's maybe it's not only Google Maps and web views that are not there, but those are the most prominent ones. So one year ago, there was no uh, partial screen video, but that's available now. So you got your points for question number three. Question number four. You probably might need something from your platform. So I just call them platform services. So you probably need something from your app that is more than just downloading data from the web or from your API. You can all do that and so you can do that in Dart. But maybe you need something more specific like Bluetooth LE or location services or SQLite database. So maybe you need some more interface with the host system. So, and the good thing is, um, there is an approach for that. I'll explain you the numbers later. So, what you can do with Flutter is you have a message passing channel to the Android or iOS side. And actually, this is a rather thin, thin layer. So, if you only want to call some operating system service, the code on your Android or, or iOS site may look very similar to what you see about tutorials about these services, for example, when it comes to subscriptions or Bluetooth LE. Um, so uh, if you just need to get something out, access sensors and get input back in. So uh, this is where you can use those uh, message passing services for. And there are already a lot of plugins from Google and also third parties that come with an implementation for both platforms. Yeah, examples are up there. Just, um, I would, I think it's good. You can have a thin layer of platform specific code and you do not have to write so much platform specific code here, but still you do need some platform knowledge. And I would warn you about those plugins. I mean, it's cool that a lot of stuff is out there and open source, but un if your app is doing something that is not very easy, or if you have a bit more specific use case, just do not consider in the beginning that those plugins that are out there in version 0.7 are ready to use off the shelf. So if you do not have anybody developing for this other platform, and yeah, probably you cannot be sure that this is going to be good enough for you. So you should be ready to get your hands dirty and also jump into the platform code. So this is why I'm saying um, if you heavily use other platform services, so several things and you would need to have a lot of things running over those platform um, over the message channel, I would give you minus points, minus 50. If it's only just like one service, it's like minus 10. And if you use none, then well, that's very easy for Flutter. If you do not use anything from the platform that is specific. But also, I mean, you, you may, again, you're free to adjust your values here. If you do have the entire iOS and Android team around, it's not so bad too, because you also can handle it. But of course, it's additional complexity compared to doing a native app only. I'm jumping to question number five, and that is a hard one for some people. Do you strive to always provide the best platform integration and adopt new OS features early? So all of us would love to say yes, but in fact, for a lot of us, it's actually no. So especially on Android with a, market, with a fragmentation of devices, for a lot of us, it takes a long time until we really, really can do and use stuff that is uh, only shipped with the new platform. It sometimes takes us years. So in theory, probably a lot of us would say yes, but for some people, um, in reality, it's a no. Well, I mean, you have to make your call now because it impacts your decision. So I was, I was thinking, um, yeah, how do we e evaluate this? So I just picked some topics that are up to date, 
that uh, came up at Google I.O. or that are somehow um, topics we are discussing here on DroidCon. So the one new thing at I.O. was dynamic delivery. So uh, when you are shipping your Android app via Google Play, um, you don't have to upload the APK, okay, including everything, but uh, it can be a modularized version. And um, the Play Store decides, builds a dynamic app bundle for the users, only including those resources and only including those languages that your users actually are going to need. So, sad face here for now. Flutter has a different structure of uh, putting in the assets that you're using for your Flutter app. So um, this is not going to help you or support you to get your uh, app size down out of the box for now. So this is a new feature that you would not have right now in your Android app that you built with Flutter. Um, next thing, also announced at Google I.O. is slices and app, act app actions. So slices are small user interface pieces that will show up, for example, uh, with Google Search and uh, there will be a deep link back into your app or to the App Store if you have not installed it yet, if a user clicks on this link. So I was thinking about this a little bit, but I mean definitely this is something you would need to implement on the native side, so on the Android side, but then still um, you would probably need, for if you have several points where you're jumping into your app, you would need several activities, so several Flutter activities this is here, so it's probably possible to have some way to use this with a Flutter app, but pr also probably you're the first person trying this. So again, it's not such a good feeling if you are on this top notch, let's do all the latest Android features right away. It's definitely harder if you are, have a certain, if you have a, another platform in the middle, sorry. Then we're talking about modularization um, since last year when instant apps were um, announced and I mean this is a clear no for Flutter so actually we are doing the opposite with Flutter. We are shipping all of the platform with our app so it's more like a we're building a huge thing here so currently it's still we're adding seven megabytes to the app. It will be better once Flutter is more optimized but definitely it's not modular but it's a big piece we are shipping with our app. But I have one good point though, as I mentioned, so Material is a first class citizen on Flutter and um, we have very good support for customizable material. So that's like the one thing from Google I.O. where we have very, where we are on a happy side with Flutter. So make your call whether this is important for you or whether you don't care so much. So, uh, next one, number six. Are you bored or sometimes annoyed with Android because some things, for example, XML layout is tedious sometimes and not so much fun, animations are hard, or because you're sitting there and waiting for your build to be finally done? So, well, those are good points for Flutter. So, um, at least a lot of people like this. You cannot read the code probably, but what you're seeing is there is code. So if you're doing Flutter, you are back to doing your UI in code. So you're writing Dart widgets, everything is a widget. And um, this means, uh, first it looks pretty weird to some people because when you start doing this, you start nesting rows and columns and centers and paddings and it's getting larger and larger. But on the other hand, finally you learn it's code and you can actually deal with long methods and code and you can deal with complexity because now it's code. So you can actually refactor it and make it smaller and make it more readable. And also it is pretty simple code. So last year at IO there was a talk about designer um, developer collaboration using Flutter. So they were working coactively, they were working together on this code because the designer said, well actually I can code this too because this is simple code. And we've had the same experience at my company that actually our designer said, well this is code that I can write. So let me just do my tweakings directly in the Flutter UI code. And this is something I've never seen happening with 
XML for Android, although actually it feels like there is a clean separation, but in the end it is not so clean because it is so easy to mess up your Android XML because you have all the IDs, even if you don't do data binding, you have the IDs coupled to the code and kind of people are afraid to touch that, or at least I have not seen this type of designers taking over the XMLs with Android, but I've seen this with Flutter code. Um, for custom stuff and animations, I'm just going to uh, give you a link if you want to see. So people are claiming uh, that Flutter UI is so much fun, you n never have to say no to your designer anymore. I'm not sure, I don't know whom I'm uh, quoting. But uh, something you can look at if you want to see this in action is there's a YouTube channel called Fluttery. So there is one guy who's getting it the audience is sending him a new challenge, something somewhere from the web, from some other app, something that's very fancy, and he's live coding them in Flutter, so redoing whatever the challenge was. And the next challenge is going to be iOS, because also people are saying iOS is behind yet, so we'll see what this person is going to come up with. A, fi a famous and very hyped feature of Flutter is stateful hot reload. Um, I sometimes feel they're overdoing it a little bit unless I go back to compiling an Android app and then I'm thinking, how the hell were we working like that all the time? So when you are developing your Flutter app, you do not compile to native all the time. So when you're in debug mode, you are running an interpreter on your device or simulator or emulator and the interpreter can pick up changes like instantly, like within a fraction of seconds. So you only press save and you have the new state of your, the app that you are currently working on and state is kept too. So if you're tweaking UI code somewhere five screens into your app and you want to fix this padding, you just do it, save and it's, you see the result immediately. So this is something, uh, this is one of the reasons why Flutter uh, chose Dart because they said this way they can easily have this uh, really nice tooling and you get used to it very quickly and are shocked when you come back to one minute 30 for, on, for Gradle or even longer than that. So if you are annoyed about any one of those, 30 points for you. Question number seven, by the way, it's, it's eight only, so I think we're going to make it in time. So where does your team come from? Do you come from Java? Then bonus points for switching to Dart. Do you come from Kotlin? Minus points for switching to Dart. Why is that? So uh, Dart 2 is object oriented as of Dart 2, which is very new. It's strongly typed, but I mean, this is where we are currently with Dart. So the good thing is it's strongly typed something we are kind of used to. Um, it is easy to learn, I have never heard complaints about that yet, but if you come from Kotlin, you just will miss things. So you are back, There's, you don't have something, well, you cannot say that something is not optional. So you are back to, it's not null pointer exceptions, it's called method called on null exception or error, so um, those guys come back. So if you're coming from Kotlin, you will probably miss it a little bit. And last, and I think very important question, do you actually have time and flexibility to try something new? Because although we are saying, doing cross-platform, we want to be faster in the end, when you start something new, you're normally not faster when you start something new. And this is something that sometimes people forget. So if you learn something new, you also need, to, well, that businesses sometimes forget. Uh, if you learn something new, you also need some time and also you are taking some extra risk when you are switching to a platform which is only in, well, we have a release candidate announced now, but still, it is still early for Flutter and there is a potential that you are the first person doing something and there is a potential that you will raise issues on GitHub. There is the potential, well, also it can be a good thing if you have time. This may be your moment to jump into open source and you can also contribute to Flutter so because it's still early and you can do all the things. So if you're thrilled by that, that's good. But actually if you have a fixed scope, fixed delivery date project, maybe it's not the right moment to jump into this new thing. 
So, yeah. Oh, I wanted to give you some more details on this one. So if you go Flutter, it's like a redo from start. You are not going to keep using the lips that you are used to. You are learning a new language. You are learning new things. There's lots of opportunity there, but also, I mean, lots to learn. One risk, maybe, or one thing to consider, so current apps that are out there are, most of them are rather small yet. And also it's rather small teams working on uh, Flutter apps right now. So, um, I mean, all of the discussion we had about Android architecture, we have discussed this for 10 years. Yeah, well, we're redoing it from start here. So it's just not that established yet and you don't have uh, all the patterns available yet. But there is, uh, there is definitely a lot of going on. So please get your points for these ones. And now, please make your summary for your points. I hope you can calculate quickly because we're running uh, towards the end, but also we started a bit later. So I'm trying to be in time. So I think you can hopefully calculate. So um, who's on this side? Who's sticking to Android? That's like a bit more than one third of the room probably. Who's still undecided or just didn't do the math? That's few people. Who's excited to try Flutter, or at least I tell you, you may try Flutter? Well, that's another third, so someone got missing in here, but uh, it's kind of equal between try Flutter and not try Flutter. So, we've got you covered for the rest of the conference, no matter in which uh, group you were in. So if you want to learn more about Flutter, there's a workshop going on um, right after this. Then uh, Brian is talking uh, at this afternoon, 20 minutes slot about architecture, an architecture talk, um, reactive Flutter apps. Then um, we have Tomek in the uh, afternoon speaking about how to bring Flutter into an existing app, or at least how to start doing this, so from the point of view of a product company. Then we have uh, Matthias in the afternoon with, with a live coding uh, session. Is it a live, is it not? It, it includes it, a live coding, but also a lot more. So that sounded to me like a uh, proper introduction into coding Flutter, which I did not do since I spoke on, on purpose on the high level things here. So you'll see more code, I think, uh, in his presentation. If you think multi-platform is a thing but did not like um, Flutter, also check out the talk about cross-platform Kotlin. And if you're on the Android side, there's all those 80 to 90 other talks for you at the conference. So enjoy the rest of DroidCon. Thank you.